Richard celebrates the great feast day of the Archangels Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. As we begin this celebration, let us open our hearts to wisdom that comes from our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, let us call to mind our sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God,
The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Responsorial song. In the sight of the angels, I will sing you praise, Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing you praise, Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things, your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. I will sing your praise. All the kings of the earth shall give thanks to you, Lord, when they hear the words of your, of your mouth, and they shall sing the ways of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. The sight of the angels as they sing your praise. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Bless the Lord, all you angels, you ministers who do his will. Alleluia, alleluia. Church, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today the Church celebrates with joy, the feast of the archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. Of all the angels that are messengers of God, that's what angels are in the scriptures, these three, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, were specifically named. And so we hold them up as the leaders so to speak, the high angels in heaven. We know of, especially of, the archangel Michael, which, who, who came to defend Israel. And in the book of Revelation, Michael is the one who in the end, with the host of angels, will have this last fight with Satan and win. Michael, that means who is like God. That's what Michael means. We know of the angel Gabriel, especially when he visited Mary at the Annunciation to announce that God had chosen Mary to be the mother of the Messiah. He had brought the news 
And so Gabriel, his name means, hmm, God is my strength. And then finally, Raphael, especially in the book of Tobit. Raphael, whose name means the healing of God, showing how when God healed Tobit's blindness and eventually Israel's blindness. These three angels that we celebrate today, these three main messengers of God, we hold up as another part of our faith that reminds us that we are not just corporeal beings, we are not just human. Our faith is not just a human faith, but that there is a whole spiritual realm that we do not see. A whole spiritual realm that is all around us, especially at the celebration of the Eucharist, that says we are surrounded by a host of witnesses. We are reminded in the nativity of Christmas time that the angels sang glory to God in the highest. And so we, as members of this faith, realize that this spiritual realm is as real in our faith as you and I. And that God uses the spirit world as well as ourselves to bring his messages to his people. And so we are held up to such high esteem by God that just as the angels came to bring God's message, so we go to bring God's message. And so we work in tandem with the angels to make God's message to this world real. That just as the angel Gabriel brought news to Mary that God had chosen her for such a great work, we bring the message of God to others that says God has called them to such a great work. In reality, all of us are being used by God, angels and humans. The spirit world and the corporeal world, the flesh world, we are being used by God for God's honor and for God's glory, not for ourselves. All of us, the archangels and we ourselves, are doing God's work. It is all God's work. We do not hold up the work at all for ourselves. We do not beat our chest. We don't take any pride in the work. We give all the glory to God, just as the angels do this day. And so, as co-workers with God, we honor our spirit world today, our angels. It just reminds us that God, in such a wonderful way, uses us, never abuses us or misuses us, but he uses us for his honor and for his glory. The angels we celebrate today had great work to do in the scriptures, and the work is not done, just as our work is not done. Our faith, especially when we pray to St. Michael the Archangel, that started that devotion to St. Michael that started for us in the, from the fifth century, it continues today and we pray we pray that Michael will assist us because evil is always knocking at our door. For God wants us to do one thing. He wants us to go one way. And yet, as Paul says, what I want to do, I don't do. And what I don't want to do, I do. And so there is this constant fight within us to always go the selfish route, to go the devil's way to do evil to, 
It's always part of the choice that we make. And so we pray to St. Michael the Archangel to help us because every day is a day of battle. Satan does not want God's work to continue. He didn't want it then. He doesn't want it now. And so we use every tool in the toolbox, especially St. Michael the Archangel, to defend us in this day of battle, to be our safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. Because we recognize that just as there is evil in the world, there is good. And just as there is good in the world, there is evil. To live in this world as if every choice we make is just up to us denies the fact that evil is always present, drawing us to our worldly ambitions, to our selfish ways, to do what God does not want of us. Because the more the devil can wrap us up in our own ambitions, our own thoughts, the less God's work will be done, the less God's call will be heeded, the less we will answer yes to God and go more and more towards the world. And so we employ every grace that God has given us, especially the Archangel Michael, to help us in this day of battle. Satan is not only gunning for our souls, but the souls of our children. The world is beautiful. The world calls to our young people. The world looks more exciting than the church. Every young person will say church is boring, church is not exciting, church is only a set of old people. The church looks boring to the world, to our young. The world with all its sights and sounds and lights look interesting. The problem is that it takes them on a ride, a ride that goes nowhere, just round and round, spinning in their own selfishness their own ambitions, only to find out in the end all that they worked for, all that they struggled for, after spending a whole life, they realize that they can take nothing with them. They leave everything here. And they have wasted their time on the things that does not satisfy the soul, but just satisfy the eye. And so this fight is constant. This civil war in within us and for the souls of our children is real. Let us never think that this is just about us. This is about, about our future, always about our future. Because if Satan can break us in our young, eventually, after we go, the church will be no more. And so that's why we not only pray for ourselves, but we pray for our children. We pray for our grandchildren, all those who are coming after us. Because this is a fight, and a fight that we must win. A fight that does not stop. A fight that Satan will not end until God ends it. And as people who believe in God, let us never be so ignorant as to think, well, this is all about us. No, it isn't. It has never been about us. It has been all about him. Because everyone that Satan wins is one less for God. 
Everyone that Satan pulls into the world is one less that is pulled towards God. This is a fight. It's a fight that we're in. And so we use everything. Every prayer, every grace, every mercy. And we are reminded today of the angels that we too can ask for help. Another tool in our toolbox of faith. So let us employ his help. Michael, Gabriel, Raphael. Let us employ the help of the saints in glory. Let us employ the spirit world to help us. Because we believe that after the, we are gone from this life, that this life does not end. It just goes to a more loftier significance. And so since there is a spirit world, they and us working for God, let us remember and let us pray. Let us fight, and God help us, let us win the fight. We thank God today for the archangels, these messengers of God, that came at certain times in history to strengthen God's people, to bring good news, and to defend us. And just as God did for them, may they do so for us in our day, today. God bless you, church. Let us bring our prayers before the Lord. Trusting that God listens and answers our prayer, in faith we come before Him. For the church, our humble hearts committed to the Father's will, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for our president and members of Congress, for leadership and laws that defend the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for all who work the land for an abundant harvest, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for the sick and those near them, for deliverance from pain and sufferings, let us pray to the Lord. For all who gather at this table for healing and hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Joseph Nguyen, father of Sister Anne, that they may enjoy the fullness of God's heavenly glory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer now our personal intentions.
that they might work assiduously. We pray to the Lord. We lift all these prayers up to God, those we have voiced and those in the silence of our hearts. We ask our Mother Mary, Our Lady, who always draws us closer to her Son, to intercede for us as we ask of her in faith. Hail Mary. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours to be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you a sacrifice of praise, O Lord, humbly entreating that as these gifts are borne by the ministry of angels into the presence of your majesty, so you may receive them favorably and make them profitable for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God and to praise you without end in your archangels and angels. For the honor we pay the angelic creatures in whom you delight, we dance to your own surpassing glory. And by their great dignity and splendor, you show how infinitely great you are to be exalted above all things through Christ our Lord. Through him the multitude of angels extols your majesty, and we are united with them in exultant adoration as with one voice of praise, we are praying. Santo.
give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You form man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, and that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through this obedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. You came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offer them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Saviour. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor who proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accompany your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him, who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. 
we proclaim his resurrection and, and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O oh Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all of whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis Arco, Paul our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant a merciful Father, that we may attain to a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, free from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, church. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray.
Having been nourished with heavenly bread, we seek you humbly, O Lord, that drawing from it new strength, under the faithful protection of your angels, we may advance boldly along the way of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy Feast Day, everybody. Please remember to stay healthy and strong because we will need you after the coronavirus. It is good to see you all again. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. We can and the snares of the devil. May God of shade be humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, pass into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander to the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Church, the Lord be with you. With the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you.